Welcome. I'm going to take a moment to show you a change that has happened in the Dublin release of ServiceNow to make WSDL uh, access for SOAP Web Services a little bit more secure, but in so doing, it also may complicate it and make it a little bit harder to understand how to get to a WSDL resource without having to authenticate. In ServiceNow, you have access to every database table in the system via Web Services. With SOAP Web Services, each web service has a WSDL document associated with it that explains what operations are available against that table. By default, in typical ServiceNow out-of-box systems, these WSDLs are protected with basic authentication. This means if you go to a WSDL, you'll be asked to authenticate in order to view the WSDL. Within, uh, in ServiceNow in previous versions, you only needed to have any type of credential set in order to view the WSDL document. If you were just a simple uh, user with no rights, you could still enter in your username and password and still see the WSDL document that was associated for that web service. You, you couldn't do anything with it, but you could still see it. Uh, in order to tighten down security a little bit more so you couldn't even see the WSDL document, ServiceNow has applied uh, access control rules to the WSDL documents such that not only do you have to authenticate to view the WSDL document, but you also have to have the SOAP role in order to see that WSDL document. So not just anyone could authenticate to get in to see the WSDL. Now this does make it more sec secure, but it does have a drawback. One of those drawbacks is that if you go to your system properties for web services, in the past, we've had this system property that says um, require authorization for incoming WSDL requests. So if you didn't, if protecting the WSDL was not a big deal to you, you could always just unclick this uh, property and click save. And once you did that, uh, anyone could view the WSDL document. So third-party clients that don't have authentication capability would still be able to consume the WSDL document. Now, to take that a step further with Dublin, since they did introduce these access control rules, you'll have to do one further step. Otherwise, otherwise if we jump over to our uh, incognito browser and we go to this, Let's go to the problem, WSDL. Notice how we get this error 403. We weren't even prompted for authentication. Uh, as per that setting, that setting said, don't require anybody to authenticate to see the WSDL. The problem here, we're getting this 403 forbidden error though, because uh, even though we don't have to authenticate, we don't have the SOAP role. So we actually cannot see the WSDL. Uh, a way to get around this is to jump over into your ServiceNow instance and browse to your access control rules and search for WSDL, star WSDL under the name field. And notice there's a new access control in Dublin called WSDL Processor. It will only allow you to execute the WSDL processor if you have admin or SOAP query roles associated with your user. Now, if we want to allow an unauthenticated user to view the WSDL, in addition to unchecking that checkbox in the system properties, we need to come to the active and deactivate, active field, deactivate this field on the access control. This essentially says anyone can see the WSDL document. So if we were to jump back into our other browser and go to the WSDL, uh, as you can see, without having to authenticate, we were able to view that document. Uh, all of this is documented in the ServiceNow Wiki. To get to it, simply go to uh, wiki.servicenow.com. And once you're there, search for web service security and you'll choose the web services security document in the results 
and then jump down to default role requirements. Right here is the section of the documentation that explains the new access control rules protecting the WSDL documents within ServiceNow.